Hello, I'm Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. We know that you can't always be in worship with us, so we're glad to provide the sermons from our weekly services. We hope that you will find hope and inspiration as we have in Jesus Christ. And now, here's this week's message. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the second chapter. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way with his disciples, made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, "Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath?" And he said to them, "Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence." which is not lawful for any but priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out immediately, conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So this week we're back in the Gospel of Mark. Remember, this is the the year of Mark and the the common lectionary that we use to choose the Bible texts that we read each week. And we're actually here to stay for a while. We've been bouncing all over with John and Luke, and um, now we're back with Mark. So a couple of quick reminders. Mark's account is the only one in the Bible that claims to be gospel, good news, right? And it was written around the 60s CE and probably someplace outside of Palestine. And a lot of scholars think probably written in Rome by Mark, who was a friend of Peter and Paul. And his challenge was to capture the stories of Jesus and the person of Jesus in writing in a way that people could relate to and understand that Jesus was, in fact, good news. Part of that was a high point was uh, Peter's confession that Jesus was Messiah. And that was during a trek to Caesarea Philippi, but that's later in the story than where we are now. And just before today's reading, Jesus has been healing people and calling disciples, people to follow him. And I think it's interesting to note that verses 1 through 10 of Mark's gospel actually span almost the full three years of Jesus' ministry. And then the rest of Mark condenses down literally into hours and days. So think about that as you're reading the gospel of Mark. Well, the Sabbath was proclaimed by God in Deuteronomy. We heard that reading a little while ago, right? And this was in response to the people's constant toiling, that is, constant work and efforts at survival, perhaps. And this law reminds the people that in history, they were at one point slaves in Egypt. So the Sabbath is a gift from God for the people of God, a reason to stop and rest from the busyness of their daily lives. God intended the Sabbath to be life-giving, not something that would be a guilt trip, right? He wanted it to be life-giving for the people of Israel. But later on, we'll hear a little bit about how even the best laid plans can be messed up when people misunderstand what it means to lead. All right, so here's a question for you. What do you wonder about when you hear this text? When you heard this reading, was there something you were wondering about? Did you stop someplace when you heard it read? Was there something that you heard that gave you hope? Was there something you were afraid of? What does God want you to say yes to? These are the kinds of questions that we can ask as we read through Scripture. 
Write them down on a piece of paper. I'll write them down for you if you want. Keep them tucked in your Bible. Keep them where it is that you normally would read your Bible at home. But ask yourself these kinds of questions. So among the things that I wondered about this week while preparing for the sermon was, why couldn't Jesus just wait one more day? Why did this have to happen on the Sabbath? Or why couldn't it happen the day before? Just wonder. What does the Sabbath look like for us today? I wondered about that as well. Does the importance of keeping the Sabbath outweigh breaking the rules? And finally, I wondered how much this story would make a great storyline for Law and Order. You ever watch that show? Right? Is that that show? But this week, I want to focus on the idea that God wants what is good for us. God wants what is good for you. Got it? Among the many things included in these two stories of Sabbath breaking bad, come on, I I worked on that all week. (laughs) There's no law against the jokes. There's an undercurrent in this story that we shouldn't miss. The undercurrent has to do with the way that Jesus interacts with the Pharisees and how these interactions contribute to the larger story of Mark's gospel. Note that Jesus doesn't attack the Pharisees, who seem to be following him around. In fact, Scripture says that Jesus was grieved at their hardness of heart. So there's compassion there. Jesus is trying to teach to open the minds of the Pharisees to the greater possibilities of the kingdom of God at work around them. In other words, he wants them to see the big picture and not be so hung up on the specifics of the law. As Donald Jewell put it, for us, as for Mark, the cross ought to be a sober reminder how easily the most noble motives can be perverted. It points out how quickly an institution can become an end in itself, stifling legitimate concerns of those outside that may seem to threaten stability. Put more simply, it's easy for people or institutions like the church to lose focus on God's desire and focus too much on the rule. Jesus wants to show the Pharisees that God wants what is good for them. God didn't create the Sabbath as a punishment or as something to feel guilty about, but as a way to press pause and reconnect with God intentionally. So, dear Pharisees, if you can't see past the need for basic life-sustaining efforts like plucking grain, you may need to rethink your position. If you can't see that healing the man's withered arm means more than just a hand and an arm that work as they should, but means economic security, a return to work, providing food for a family, losing the stigma of being less than, or someone who's being punished by God. Remember, that's the way they would have thought about it. Jesus is changing relationships. Jesus is changing our relationship with God. What do we know about change? Anyone? Anyone? We fear change. (laughs) If I ask you about change, and it's not, hey, can you break a five and give me five ones? You're going to ask, why, what, who, what, how, what, huh? Right? We fear change. We do. It's human. It's this fear that runs through the rest of Mark's gospel that leads the Pharisees to conspiring with the Herodians, the very ones, the very ones, oppressing the people that the Pharisees are tasked with leading. Does God really want what's good for us? Absolutely. But here's the thing. We fear change, just like the Pharisees. We're threatened by things or ideas that push us outside our comfort zone or, more appropriately, our control zone. The funny thing is we all want relief from the things that press in against us, don't we? 
We all want relief from the pressures that push down on us, that suck the life out of us. Still, we push back against what God wants for us. You see the Sabbath pressing pause for some intentional time of rest, of service to others, of focusing on our relationship with God. Something that I believe God still intends for God's people today threatens us. It threatens our control, our calendars, our schedules. The idea of following the Sabbath asks us to change. It opens the door for our human fear of missing out. Have you heard that FOMO, fear of missing out? What if we aren't there for everything? What if our kids aren't involved in every activity or every sporting event? What if, what if, and the FOMO takes over? Sabbath opens the door to having to change the order of things in our lives. And we don't like that. We make Sabbath about us instead of about God. How many of you feel overwhelmed each day? Brave man, put his hand right up. I like that. Hey, I'm with you. You ever had a week where you have to be more places than you can physically be at once? God wants what is good for you. God gives you Sabbath as a plan for your life. God desires relationship with you. When we talk to people about taking Sabbath time, people will push back against me saying, well, I don't have an entire day to do nothing. Or I have too many kids and too many obligations to make Sabbath work for me. Okay. So where will you start? Where on your calendar can you look for some time to block out, to spend as Sabbath? Intentional time to rest and to listen to the Holy Spirit, to invest in your relationship with God. God wants what is best for you. God wants what is good for you. I'm not trying to guilt you into anything. Jesus wasn't trying to guilt the Pharisees into anything either. In fact, he was arguing that there are times when it makes sense to not follow the rules for Sabbath when healing and life-changing events are at stake. I simply want to remind you that you are precious to God. You are precious to God. You matter to God, and God wants what is good for you. As far back as the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, God knew that people needed intentional time off from busy in order to reset the body, mind, and spirit. Sabbath time isn't about you. It's for you. Not about you, but for you. If we truly believe that God wants what is good for us, what will it look like for you to spend some time Sabbathing this week? What will it look like for you to block out space as Sabbath and just listen to God's voice? Thanks for listening to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. If you're ever in the Dubuque land area, please join us for worship. Visit our website at www.lordoflife.online to learn more about service times and about our vision for serving God and our community. God bless you.